Hey guys, RC here, back with Football Manager 21. This is Club 4, Episode 10 of our Bielsa Journeyman Save. We are at Levante in the Spanish First Division. Remember to hit that like button if you like what I'm doing here. Uh, that's the only way I ask you to support the channel. And uh, subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager content. Uh, taking a look at a couple of things before we get into the matches today. Uh, we have uh, an A- minus grade from the board. The only thing they are uh, concerned about or criticizing is that we lost 5-3 to three to PSG last episode. Um, do they realize it's PSG? Just saying. I'm just saying. You need to get a grip on reality here, board member dudes. Uh, so we've got B's, B's in just about everything. Uh, transfers are C's and tactics are C's. Frequency of goals. I get it. I get it. Uh, also, in some other news, you remember a while back we had asked them to upgrade the training facilities and the youth facilities? Well, those are completed as of uh, September 27th and September 30th, so just a couple of days ago. Uh, I went back in and asked them to improve both again. Uh, they did agree to improve the training facilities, so that has started uh, today and will be finished in a couple of months in February. So that's good. Uh, they did reject the youth facilities, which I'm a little upset about. Because remember, one of the goals here is to develop the best youth system in the country. Got to have the best youth facilities if you want the best youth system. So they're not helping me achieve that. I also don't understand this, that they're disappointed in reaching the Champions League playoffs. I guess that's the knockout stages, if I'm correct there. We've only played one match out of six. It's a little early to be jumping on my shit list. You know, if I get too much flack out of that after the Champions League, I might walk. Remember, this is a Bielsa-style journeyman. Uh, we talk about that in depth in the intro to the series, so if you didn't watch that and you're kind of wondering what that means, go check it out. Uh, I think I've got the link in the description. I'm pretty sure I put it in there permanently. But let's get to the matches today. Uh, we did play a few matches. Uh, after the PSG loss, we uh, drew with Gijon nil-nil, a 4-2 win over Real San Sebastian. Antonio Gonzalez scored three goals in this one, and we'll mention him again in just a minute. And Valencia, our rival, is uh, a 3-3 draw, and they got a 92nd-minute equalizer. I was a little gutted by that, but... Uh, what are you going to do? It's a rivalry game. So we talked about Antonio Gonzalez. He has 80 goals for our club, and that is the club record. Let's see. Yep, most league goals by a player, 80 by Gonzalez. And I thought there was a way... I got to say, there's a, there's a game, if you guys haven't played it, it's similar to Football Manager. It's a management-style game. Uh you are not the manager of the club. You are more the director of football for the club. So in American baseball, it's called a, a general manager or a GM. And it's so it's a similar style game as football manager where you, you know, you buy, sell players. But where where that game outshines football manager, and don't don't get me wrong, I love football manager. You notice I don't do out of the park baseball on my channel. I have, but it's not my main series. Football Manager is. But one place that it outshine that that game outshines Football Manager is in the stats and the histories. So, just for example, in that game, there would actually be like for the Spanish First Division. I could go there, and I could go into records. And then I would be able to click on most goals. Now, right now it shows Messi with 50. But I could click on this, and each one of these would have its own page, its own window that would open. And I could see 
the top hundred players or the top fifty. I could determine how much I, how deep I wanted to go. So you know, whose record did Lionel Messi break? I don't know. Do you know? If you know, more power to you. But I bet most people don't. So that's a shortcoming of this game. I've recommended that every year for about the last four years, and I've always kind of been ridiculed for it. But I think the historical depth, uh, the ability to see the history, not just the current record holder, is by far um, superior in that other game. Just my two cents, um, and that's one of the things I would like to see. But anyway, new record for Gonzalez. That was where I wanted to go with that, and I went on a rant. My bad. All right, let's get into the game against Rangers. We are away in this one. So we're going to go with Francisco in goal, the back four, Robinson, Navarro, Kovac, and Garay, Nadric Nass, and Enrique in the midfield, Garcia and Ibanez on the wings, Illa Marindi and Gonzalez up top. The new record holder in goals scored for Levante. And Illa Marindi might be lining that, re that uh, record up in his sights. <laughs> he has been off to a good start to his career. That's an interesting uh, with the opening in the corner. I like that stadium. That's kind of cool looking. Ibrox. Gers. <laughs> All right. Let's give some encouragement. Back post, but Francisco gets there. Doherty tries to harass him a little bit. Francisco laughs it off. It's over the top. Ilmarindi's on, and oh, he tried to dink the keeper. I don't think he would have been able to get a, a shot low because I think the defender was there. But uh, that was a great effort by Ilmarindi. He has turned on his man, Gonzalez, and it's slotted home. Ilamarindi, his seventh of the season, and we take a 1-0 advantage over Rangers. Where's our fans? I'm looking for them. There they are, down in the corner, eh? Gotta like it. Looks like we had a full contingent make the trip. Thank you very much. And it is Rangers nil, Levante one. Oh my God, Wheel at the back post. Josh Wheel. That's uh, that's our former player, isn't it? It is. I don't want to watch him score against me again. Oh, where's he at? Yeah, he's thirty years old now. Lester, yeah, we we picked him up for thirty six million, or actually no, he was already at the club because we remember we came out of the championship. So this was the first year I was at the club, ten assists, ten assists, and then he just started losing his way. Last year, of course, I was here, and then they sold him for nineteen million, about half value, but still, Mister Wheel, one of our former players, come back to haunt us. And they're playing a stacked box in the mid. That's interesting. You don't see a 4-2-2. That's kind of something out of uh, the England national side, right? Let's demand more. Navarro, near post, cleared out. Doherty's on it. Navarro gets to it, steals it away. Oh, there's a good through ball. Nadric Nass, Garcia, into the box. The volley from Ibanez goes high. I didn't even look at their lineup before the game to notice Wheel was there. That's crazy. And I'm sure we looked at that at the beginning of the season, but I've forgotten that. <laughs> Halftime, one apiece. All right, we need to do better. Let's pump the fist. I'm happy with your performance. Let's do that. I think the assistant manager was on the right path there. Just kind of keeping an eye. And there goes Ivanez into the, into the red. Uh, potential injury by Robinson. Let's go ahead and sub him off. Uh, we'll bring Galati on over there. Galati's our new player. This will be his debut. And he can play all three positions. I'm, I'm really 
thinking about giving him a run at center back, uh, replacing, uh, actually, you know what? Let's do that here. Let's bring Galati into the mid. He's 6'2". He can head the ball. I like all that. Let me check one thing here. No, it is. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's, uh, I've got my right back at the uh, post. You know, I need to pull Ibanez off too. Let's bring Santine on for him. So we'll make two early subs. Nothing I can really do about that. Let's demand more. All right, there's Garay. Gonzalez into the box. Nadric Nass. Navarro. Crossed in. The header. Oh, and it just goes wide. I think that was Santine. That would have been a nice uh, first goal for him. Uh, Francisco goes up. What a star he's looking so far. Outside of the five goals given up against, uh, you know, Paris Saint-Germain. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> he gets the ball and I get nervous. Knocked away. And Francisco was sitting down. What the hell was that? What was that? It looks like he committed to that first shot. Right there. Yeah, he just knelt down and there was nothing there. No deflections or anything else. That's, that's horrible. We come right back with a kickoff highlight. Oh, and it's intercepted by Morrison. Over the top. Kovac is beaten. Francisco gets dinked, but luckily it hits the woodwork. Come on. Into the box. Oh, Kovac is beaten again. Oh, my goodness. What in the hell is all that? All right, give me a minute. I got to think here. All right, we're going to bring uh, Anaki Martinez on in the mid for uh, Nandrick Nass. And we are going to switch to a 4 4 2 uh, with four in the center in the mid see if that helps you know we've got wingers that can attack but playing a little bit deeper in that central mid and see if that helps us defensively here as well completely wide open there header goes high uh we are going to have to go positive here all right let's uh let's demand more i think a loss here probably kills us I think it just kills us completely. Oh, man. We looked so good. We were the underdogs again, so obviously we weren't supposed to win that game either, but now we're three points behind both of them, and we were in both of these games. Two to four weeks with that foot injury for Robinson. Galati makes his debut. All right, we've got uh, Barcelona. I'm going to play them and Sevilla off camera. And we'll come back for Club Bruges. See you guys in just a second. Well, as you could just see, I just moved in my microphone. So we'll take a look at key highlights. Uh, it started off with Lecoq putting one in on a penalty inside the first two minutes. That was not the way we wanted to start the game. And then 11 minutes in, they had another challenge here. Took a shot, knocked aside by Francisco. I'm going to speed the match up here for the replay. Mecca plays it short. Enrique over the top, and the header by Ibanez went over the goal. So we're not just looking at the goal highlights. We're looking at extended highlights here, or key highlights. There was our first goal, a corner piece from Kovac. Header goes in to equalize. It would stay that way until the 71st minute. Big save by Francisco and Kovac with the clearance on the volley. Nass runs it out of bounds, out of play, over the sideline. 
we got a good cross. We had just switched Ibanez from right to left there uh, to make a couple of subs, and Illamarindi puts that one home. That gave us a 2-1 to one advantage in the 78th minute. A little heel kick played into the box, and a huge save by Francisco with the shot from close range. That was huge. And we would get another opportunity here. Gonzalez has just not looked great since his injury earlier in the season. But you can see 22 shots, 11 on target, 52% possession. So we actually had a really good game. We get $3 million for that. And I get it. Kovac, they've said he could use a rest, but we had this match, and then we have Real Madrid in the league. And then I'll give him a week off before we come back for more Champions League. Uh, so really good outing here. Six key passes for Navarro. We will praise him for that. So currently we are now tied in, you know, for second with three points. Goal differential is the separation here. Uh, so what we need at this point is PSG to win out. Maybe we can steal a point from them, although I doubt it. Uh, so assume that they beat us. We really want PSG just to run away and be unbeaten in the, in the, ta in the group. And then we need to pull points from Club Bruges and Rangers in the second legs. That's what we're going to be hoping for. We open up uh, Spanish Super Cup uh, in January against Real Madrid. That's also our next league opponent. And we are currently in fourth, holding on to Europe qualifying. Only a plus three goal differential. We haven't been scoring a ton, and we've been leaking a lot of goals. So, you know, it's, it's you know, take a look here at the table. Uh, and ever since we started Champions League, we've really struggled. Just, you know, one win uh, across, you know, outside of the one today against Club Bruges. So I'm, I'm thinking about another tactic. I really don't want to give up on this one because we we had started off so well. We did try that 4-4-2, the you know the, the base 4-4-2 and we got blown up with that. So I don't think that was the answer. Uh we're using in the other save we're using a uh 4-3-1-2 uh with an attacking mid and uh two strikers which I like. And I think with our striker duo, I think we need that to take advantage of the best players that we've got. Uh, I need to see what that does to Ibanez, however. And I think what I might do is I might put it into the rotation so we start training it and give it a little bit of time before I actually pull it out in a match. So uh, anyway, moving ahead, we're going to be uh, playing a couple of games uh, in the league. We will come back uh, for... Club Bruges and PSG next uh, video, next episode. Uh, we'll do Club Bruges uh, for sure, and then probably I'm just assuming we're going to get drilled, but I still think we need to watch it. So uh, <laughs> we'll come back for the double Champions League uh, next episode, and then we'll probably skip down to uh, Espanol Highlights, Rangers uh, on video, and then uh, we'll come back for, I don't think I'm going to do the Super Cup. Uh, we'll probably definitely be back for Real Madrid back here. Maybe a Barca-Real Madrid uh, combo there. Depending on what's going on with Champions League if we get out of group stage. So don't forget, hit that like button for me. Subscribe for Daily Football Manager content. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.